Hi everybody, it's Miranda from the Queens Botanical Garden. As part of QBG at Home today, we're going to take a little trip. Did you know that every tree planted in New York City has its own story to tell? Today, we're going to look at one tree very closely, and I'd invite you to also look around trees in your neighborhood. You can use a notebook like me today, or sketches, photos on your phone, or other ways. Remember to comment below and share your discoveries. We're looking forward to seeing them. Don't be such a social butterfly. Stay a safe distance away from other people. Wear a face covering or mask. And if you have gloves, put those on to explore. This one, when I looked it up, um, it was called the American Basswood. Okay, we're gonna put that right here. The American basswood is also known as the bee tree. That's because this tree, when pollinated by bees, actually produces a really valued honey. Another thing that I noticed right away about this tree is how much shade it provides to my street. It has this amazing drooping canopy. Let's take a look at that. Now, when I was here a few weeks ago at this tree, there weren't many leaves. Now there are. It's a process called leafing out or leaf out. The thing about leaf out is it doesn't happen at the same time every year. It depends on the climate. It depends on things like water and sunlight. tree started leafing out around April this year, but sometimes it will start leafing out in May or maybe end of March. Another thing I noticed that's really cool are all of these leaves at the bottom of the tree. Weird, right? These are called suckers. And these actually are not good for the tree and perhaps should be trimmed back because they take some nutrients from the tree canopy. But one thing that's really nice is it allows us to zoom in and get a look at what the leaves look like on this American basswood. In our QBG at Home Science on the Sidewalk series, you can learn how to make some beautiful leaf art. Wow, what are those? Hmm, they look like upside down red chili peppers. Hmm, maybe not. Those are actually caused by a mite, believe it or not. A tiny creature, smaller than we can see with our own eyes. Since we can't see most mites with our eye, we instead use powerful microscopes and hand lenses to see them. If we were to take one ruler and zoom in to the one inch mark and then chop that into hundreds of pieces, our mite would still be smaller than one of those hundreds of pieces we chopped up. Now, when our mites arrive at the tree, they're very hungry, so they start to eat the leaves. This releases a signal for the tree to produce these upside down red chili peppers, or what scientists call galls. As the season moves on, the mite produces and lays eggs inside the red galls. After the season's over, the mite leaves.
right? I'm gonna pluck a leaf from here, right? Well, it looks like our time is up for today, but in the meantime, remember to comment below with your questions and your discoveries, and we'll look forward to seeing them soon. Thanks, see you at the next tree.